In this video, I want to talk about the signaling cascade for insulin. So insulin is a peptide hormone or polypeptide hormone. And of course, that means that it's a polar hormone. So it's going to act and bind a cell surface receptor. Insulin is initially synthesized as a zymogen or an inactive precursor called preproinsulin, which is cleaved in, and turned into proinsulin, and that is later turned into insulin, the active form. Now, that insulin is released specifically from the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas. So, glucagon was released from the alpha cells, insulin is released from the beta cells. Now, Insulin, uh, you might have actually heard of that term before, and you might have heard it referred to diabetics, which we'll talk about later. Uh, insulin responds to high blood glucose levels. If it's too high, lower it. That's what insulin does. So it acts on liver, muscle, and adipose which is of course just fat cells to decrease blood glucose levels. So how does it do that? Variety of ways. So anything that decreases blood glucose levels is something that insulin will activate. Does glycosis de glycolysis decrease blood glucose levels? Yes, it breaks down glucose. So it'll um, it'll increase glycolysis. Will glycogen synthesis um, decrease blood glucose levels? Yeah, it does because it takes glucose from being free-floating to being bound as part of a glycogen chain. So it will also increase glycogen synthesis. Will it increase or decrease fatty acid synthesis? It will increase fatty acid synthesis basically because fatty acid synthesis is, ba is a way to store energy. If you have blood glucose level around then you could take that glucose and eventually just store it as um, uh, a fatty acid. In addition, it can also um, increase the translocation of glucose transport protein, which is GLUT4, to the plasma membrane. Basically, GLUT4 is a channel protein that allows glucose to flow into the cells. So, if there's cells in your, if there's glucose in your blood, you want to take that glucose out of your blood and into your cells. So insulin will stimulate the uptake of glucose from the blood into your cells. So how does this work? It doesn't happen via a G-protein coupled receptor. Instead, this happens via a receptor tyrosine kinase. instead. So here's how it works. And it's not totally understood this whole scheme. It's actually very very complex. I've simplified it greatly here. Um, essentially what happens is insulin comes over and binds this tyrosine receptor kinase. Now there are two alpha subunits and two beta subunits. Insulin will come and bind the alpha subunits and when that does this whole system sort of dimerizes and there are these little tyrosine residues on this the beta on the cytoplasmic side of these beta subunits and these tyrosine residues can autophosphorylate themselves I'm going to write that here autophosphorylation so these tyrosine residues can end up having little phosphate groups tacked onto them and um they can also uh Tar or in initiate the phosphorylation of certain target proteins that have tyrosine residues. So the tyrosine residues on certain target, target proteins will be phosphorylated. Now once these target proteins are phosphorylated, they can have some sort of cellular response. Now obviously the, the situation is much more complex than that and even today it's still not completely understood. So, uh, but I hope that simplification was a little bit helpful and it's important to realize that this insulin um, triggers a, a cascade in a, in a different fashion it via a receptor tyrosine kinase as opposed to a G-protein coupled receptor.
Hope that brief overview was helpful. I am a tutor. If you live in Southern California, feel free to contact me via email at moveuniversity at gmail.com. See the description below for more details. Thank you for watching.